All right, so pretty simple, pretty straightforward. One camera, one uh, line of audio. I basically had a mic overhead. You can actually see here the in the shop my C stand with the mic. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't paying attention to that and didn't realize that that was in the shot. So, oh well, <laughs> that's in there. But video's already done, and posted, so can't do anything about that one now. But uh, anyway, yeah, so you can see how I had this set up. But uh, yeah, so it's basically, yeah, you got you got audio, you got one track of, you got one track of audio, one thing of video, uh, and I got some music and some B-roll. So super simple, I found some uh, built-in titles and transitions that they have here. I'll kind of just hover over it and play through to see what it looks like. And I said, okay, cool, I like that. If you ever run into an issue where you're doing stuff and you don't see anything, uh, like when you're doing that, it could be that you have your uh, bypass color grades and fusion effects toggle off. So make sure that's on. What other thing I got going on is up here, I have a on my adjustment layer, I, I did a um, adjustment clip and I did my color grade there. Uh, sometimes I'll, I like to do that so I don't have to add it to every clip. I can just put it on there and slide it over. So I'll go through that as well. But um, like I said, the first thing I decided to do was go ahead and get a nice lower third that I liked. Got his name, his position, and the company. Then I just played it through. It was no need to sync or anything like that because, like I said, I had the audio going directly into my camera. So that was easy. Some of my B-roll shots here. He was talking about the back. So I just had a bunch of B-roll shots to choose from. And go to my media pool here. And you can see this is everything I had. Like I said, one one video he just went through a couple times uh you know until we got a take that we liked then i said all right i'm gonna go ahead and grab some b-roll so what i do is i always scroll through my b-roll make sure i see what everything is and grab a part of the clip that i like so i decided it was this section that i wanted and then something you can do uh you can obviously just grab an entire clip and just drag it down. But if you double click it, so I'm working with, it'll be easier if I pull up dual monitors. So let me just do that real quick. You can have two screens on at once. I usually only use, I just usually just keep it as one. I don't even remember how to do it now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, close it. So you can have two screens like this. So you can see what's going on in your media pool. Uh, over here, double click. This shows you what's in your media pool. The one on the right shows you what's on what's happening in your timeline. So, for instance, if let's say I like, actually, I don't want what I have here. Let me grab another section. I can set some in and out points by by hitting uh, I and O. Grab that section that I want. If I grab the whole thing, it'll grab audio and it'll grab the video. But since this is B roll, I don't want the audio in this situation anyway. So I'm gonna just hover over this track here, grab that, and pull it down. And now that's in, and now that's in there. Cover that up. But like I said, I usually only use this one because I like to have my uh, inspector open. But if you want to see both at the same time, you can. Basically, if you double click here, this turns into the other viewer for the for the media pool, the preview monitor, essentially. And then once you click back on the timeline, it changes back to the sequence or timeline viewer. Uh, yeah, I have a couple different, so yeah, pan in there. So something else I did that is a good thing to do is like, uh, let's say you have some motion that's not all the way smooth, you can add some stabilization onto it. So let me turn stabilization off. I don't think it was super crazy. I just, when I was panning, when I was tilting with the camera, I had some glitches in my movement, so I wanted to fix it. You can see like, it's, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm moving all over the place. So I was like, all right, let me go ahead and smooth that out. Turn stabilization on, and then you hit stabilize. All right, now you watch it back. I already stabilized it, so that's why it popped up so easily. It's still a little bit, you still see like this speed change, but at least it's not jerking as crazy as it was. And you can also go through and change the stable, the stabilization type and it might work better. 
So let's see if this does any better than what that one did. What's going on? It's not bad, but it makes the whole thing kind of jello-y. Then you can also do translation. Oh wait, my bad. You can go translation. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of smooths it out throughout, but now it's like it's kind of like just bouncing a little bit. So I'd rather just keep it on perspective and just deal with my uh, my janky camera move there. It's not as noticeable, the jelloing. That one was a little bit better. I don't think I, I guess I did stabilize this one. Oh, well, maybe I didn't. Let's see what that does. Yeah, it did pretty good on that one. So yeah, if you have crazy movement, it might not do the best, but you can also go through and like adjust the intensity. I don't have the intensity on that. Oh, I actually do have a strength, a strength all the way up. Smoothness, you can kind of mess with that a little bit too, but it's such a quick shot, so I wasn't too concerned about it. Um, and it's not that, I mean, it's noticeable, but I'm breaking it down a lot. So yeah, that to me is a lot more artificial looking. So... We'll just roll with what we had. It's not a big deal. Take the smoothest neck down. Now I notice it a lot more. <laughs> but anyways, we're gonna move on from that shot because this video is already done. <laughs> uh, so I came back here, but I wanted, I think what I did, this may have been two different videos mixed and I don't remember why I cropped in, but I think I did it for a reason. There probably was something I was trying to cover up. No, maybe not. I think I just punched. Sometimes I'll punch in just to create, you know, some di diversity within the shot. So it doesn't look exactly the same the whole time. And the cool thing is I shot in 4K. So I can punch in a lot because I um, am basically exporting this in 10 1080p. So I have the extra real estate to play with in situations like this. Another shot, this was a still, this is not a still image, this is a video that I turned into a still image. Uh, let's see, 74 one. So I think, uh, let's see if I can remember why I did this. Which one was this? It says 74 one. Oh, right, 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 okay, yeah, okay. So I did not have a shot of this bag, really. And I was like, oh, dang it. I, I never got a, a shot of this bag and I wanted to get multiple bags. So I didn't want to keep showing the same thing. I needed like another B-roll clip. And I was like, I already showed the bag my brother's holding right there and in the bag behind him here. I've showed that a couple of times. And I don't want to show it again. And I'm going to, I wanted to show that one there. And that's actually my hand holding it. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to show that one there. So I was like, all right, I need to have another bag here. I needed like something. So what I did was I found a frame in this clip where I dropped the bag, I think, or he dropped it. One of us did. Yeah, right there. So <laughs> thankfully I had the camera on uh, autofocus because the focus jumped to the bag. So you see there, and then I turned the camera off because I wasn't thinking to even get a shot of that. So because I had that clean frame there, I was like, oh, let me just freeze frame it. So just to kind of show you how that would work, let me just grab this again. Uh, I'll show y'all. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna just come over here, grab just that, drop it down. All right, so as you can see, all right, and that's the, that's the part I want. So what I'm gonna do is delete this. And now what you can do is right click, go to change clips duration. No, I messed up. Right click, go to change clip speed and then you want to hit freeze frame and then you hit change and now it froze on that frame so all of this became that one frame and if i drag it out it's just going to be that frame so now i can make this as long or as short as i want it to be and as you can see here i said all right i need 
uh, this much space to be on it. I need to, I need to cover it. I needed to cover that much time so I could just drag it, you know, where I wanted it to be. It's a pic. It's essentially now a, a picture. So it's not, you know, I can make it as long as I want. So it was perfect. It's, it did exactly what I needed to do. It fills the space I needed it, needed it to fill, but there's no motion. So what I decided to do, as you can see, like I did on this other one, I added some camera motion in post. Uh, but instead of keyframing it, which you can totally do, but it's not something I am fond of doing. So what I decided to do was use DaVinci Resolve. It's probably one of my favorite features in DaVinci Resolve, I'm being honest with you. I use it all the time, is dynamic zoom. So you just click that on and it does it itself. That's its default right there. You could leave it just like that if you wanted to, uh, and it could be fine, but I was like, but the thing that's cool about it is you can go in and tweak it. So to do that, you want to come over here to the, uh, you want to come over here to your viewer. So we click here on the arrow and then it's on the transform by default usually. Then you can go to dynamic zoom and it shows you essentially the uh, animation path or, or how, however you would sit, uh, look at it. So this is a start, the green is where it starts at. It's zooming out so it's in zooming out so it's in zooming out so you can see how it's doing and it's basically showing you the the this is the distance it's traveling but let's say i didn't want it to zoom in let's say i didn't want it to move that fast what i could do is just start make a starting point a little bit later so that way it has less distance to travel and then it'll move slower as you see, like that is more smooth and to me a little bit more subtle. It doesn't look as mechanical. But let's say you, but then that's one way, but you could also do it like this. Instead of maybe you wanted it to be as zoomed in as it was, but you still want to move slower, you can bring your uh, end point closer in so that way it has less distance to travel. It just won't zoom out as much, but it will still go pretty slow. So that's an option. The other thing you can do with dynamic zooms, go back to where it was. Let's say you're like, I don't want it to do, I don't want it to zoom out, I want it to zoom in. You can also swap it. So now your starting point is gonna start out and come in. So let's just go ahead and play that through. And there you go. Something else you can do that's pretty cool is uh, do your um, dynamic zoom ease, ease in. So you can do like an ease in and an ease out. And this is supposed to kind of help it not be as mechanical. So you see that how it kind of like eased into it, it eased into its uh, animation. And then it eased out of it. So it's like it went slow and it sped up and then it slowed down to go out. Faster slows down. So yeah, that's how that works. Uh, you can do either just a ease in and then it won't ease out or you can ease out and or we can do both of them together or just keep it consistent all the way through, which is what this is actually what I normally do is just keep it consistent because then I always make it so much. Uh, I usually shrink the distance and that to me does what I needed to do because it's just subtle and it's just to create a little something, you know, so moving very fast. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Hold on. Oh, I was on the wrong thing. I wonder. Okay, I was like, what is happening right now? Okay, turn that off. I was like, it was not making any difference. Bring this ending point closer. There we go. Something like that. But yeah, so that's essentially how I got to this. And then I was able to go to the rest of the clip and use it how I wanted it wanted to and uh, I picked another animation from over here like I said you just go through see the different things you like I just wanted something simple to pop up at the end to show the discount he was offering during February and that's the number of his store and uh, yeah there you go like I said pretty simple straightforward oh yeah let me go through the color grade so let me take you through that pretty quick uh, it was simple I really didn't do anything in super crazy. Like I said, I didn't want everything was shot in the literal same location under the same lighting. So I didn't worry too much about 
making a whole lot of changes between shots. I said, it'll be fine. I shot with him. This part that I went right after that, moved in to get these uh, close ups of the bags, and that was it. So um, I'll turn it off so you can see what we're dealing with here. I'm missing. Oh, okay, hold on. I see. No, it's, there we go. I was like, what is happening right now? Okay, so yeah, no. If you, if you ever don't see something in DaVinci Resolve that you're used to seeing, sometimes you might just have too many things open. So if you close like the effects panel and I close nodes, uh, you see how things jump around. So I was looking for the effect, for the, the, for the toggle to turn off the, the color grade and that's why I couldn't see it. So like I said, I just kept it very, it's very subtle actually. It, I, was really, I didn't really do much to be honest with you. Just a few things. Uh, the no every time I pull the nodes, oh, let me put this away for now. There we go. I just need more real estate so I can see it. All right. So on the first, I just got to edit two two nodes. This one I think was just uh, some primary corrections, and yeah, that was my opinion. So I did this was like some simple. I want to pop, make add a little bit of pop um, with the color. What did I do? Oh, a little bit of contrast. So yeah, I really, I think all I really did here was add some contrast. It's not really much. I didn't feel like I needed, needed to really do a whole lot on this video. Just wanted to keep his natural look. I could have done some white balancing because this wall definitely does not look white. <laughs> but again, wasn't too concerned about that. I don't even think those wall, the walls are actually white anyway. I think those walls are actually, yeah, because this is, this is white. This is more of a tan color anyway. So I'll take that back. Uh, yeah, this was, you know, just keeping it pretty straightforward and simple. Bring it back. So yeah, we did a little pop there. And then on this one, I just wanted to add a vignette. So if I pull up my effects, you see I used it. Sometimes I do it a different way. Sometimes I'll draw a mask and do my own uh, vignette by hand. This time I decided to use the built-in vignette tool, which works pretty good. You can grab that in your effects. So you go to your library, uh, you would search vignette. This is how you would grab any of the effects you want to use. Grab it and drag it and drop it on there. Uh, so you see that, I mean, I have already have one on, so I don't need to add another one. So it's kind of just like doubling, doubling up the layer essentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off, undo that. Go into it and you can, uh, oh, I just redo it. Go back. All right, so come into here and you can like, you know, make a lot of changes to what you're doing, change the shape, you give it basically the size of it. You can adjust uh, how soft it is, global blend, how, you know, uh, transparent it is, how, 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 like how much you see it. I didn't want it to be that dark, but it's just very subtle. Let's go back to what I had. Okay, so this is very, very basic, very underhanded. Um, you know, it's not like it's a commercial or a feature film or wedding or anything like that. I, mean, I could have spent a lot more time on it, but it was a quick, easy video. He needed it a fast turnaround. So I just kept it basically how I shot it in camera. Uh, but yeah, and if you want to export, I don't think I've ever really done an export. Um, you can do a custom or you can go through and do uh, some of the basically uh, the preset rendering things they have here. A lot of times I'll do YouTube if I know it's going to somewhere like a YouTube. Uh, so basically whatever platform you know you're going to, you could use that if you wanted to. Uh, YouTube usually works or I'll just, you can do something like that. I, I usually I'll just do custom and then just let it do its own thing. And I'll, I usually will switch to MP4 though, because I don't usually need it to be quick time or anything else. And I don't usually mess with anything else, unless it's very specific. You just name the video, whatever you want to name it, and save it wherever you want it to go. Hopefully you found that video helpful, and if you did, be sure to leave a like. Um, if you have any questions about anything I did or something wasn't clear, be sure to let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. And until next time, Peace.